But I always like to start with the future of AV, fiber optics. Why are we doing this? And if you've been in AV for any time, you know that we've seen this progression from twisted pair, you know, copper-based systems, extenders, and now all of a sudden over the last 12 to 18 months, there's all this conversation about fiber. Why is that? You know, when we started teaching this course, people would come, they were curious, they knew that, you know, one day fiber was going to be affecting the installations and they'd have to incorporate it more and more, but it was, it was really an if conversation, right? Well, today you have to do it. I mean, the consumer technology that we are operating with in today's custom and professional environment, it really requires us to use optical cable. And certainly if we talk about how do I future-proof my installation, how do I make sure my customer can plug their devices in for years to come, we have to talk about fiber optic cabling. And here's the good news. If you're completely new to this topic, and I will tell you that lots and lots of people who take these courses, they are completely new to this topic, the fiber ecosystem, the parts and the pieces that we use every day, it's really not that much different than the twisted pair ecosystem, the products you've been using for years to make your AV systems work. What do I mean by that? Well, let's look at those parts and pieces, okay? Most people think about fiber, they think about bulk cable, right? They think I'm going to have a cable running to the house and wire the DMARC, or maybe I'm going to wire up this office building and make sure I've got fast speeds for webinars and video conferencing and things like that. Well, people think of bulk cable and they think, okay, I'm going to terminate that bulk cable. And absolutely, that is a central part of the conversation. And that bulk cable today can be manufactured in different ways. We may armor it. We may bury it. We build cables in different ways. And the fiber that goes into those cables can be glass, it can be polymer, it can be polymer coated glass. There's different ways we will construct the cables. Okay, that's a big part of the conversation. And yes, you will terminate those in the field. And yes, you will buy tools and you will test the cables and this is all part of that conversation. But where fiber really starts to depart from that traditional twisted pair conversation or really any low voltage, traditionally copper-based cable conversation is in the pre-mates. You know, we, whether we call those patch cords or pre-terminated cables, call them what you will, but fiber's a little different than traditional cables that we've used in the past, okay? What do I mean by that? Well, when we think about patch cords or pre-terminated cables, we usually think about rack interconnects, right? I've got two different boxes that are wired into this rack. I'm going to connect these with a couple of different cables, usually a short cable run. That's what we tend to do. Well, in the fiber world, it's incredibly common to buy a pre-terminated cable that really comes in any length, any configuration. And when I say any length, I literally mean, hey, you've got that gate application where you've got a security camera 2,000 feet away, 3,000 feet away two miles away. Fiber is an incredibly strong, surprisingly strong, very small, pliable cable. Okay, the technology's come a long way. And you can buy a pre-terminated cable that's plug and play that you pull over that distance. And a factory, a machine will build that cable, will put the connectors on, will wrap that cable so you have a secure way to pull it up to 100 pounds of pull rating strength. So these things are strong. But here's a really surprising thing. Pre-terminated cables often cost less than terminating in the field. And it has nothing to do with labor. It has everything to do with the parts and the pieces, the, the actual fiber cabling, the type of connectors. When these are machined in a factory, pre made they're built in a factory, it often costs less for those components than what you would use hands-on in the field. So as integrators start their fiber journey, they often think about pre-terminated cables. They will often start by measuring the distance, buying a cable that's pre-terminated, simply pulling it and plugging it in. In fact, we offer online courses that just walk you through how to do this, how to design a cable, what to look for, what, what to look out for, things like that. So think about pre-terms, think about pre-made, 
it's a very good way to start your journey. Now, of course, we have cable, got to mount it somehow, you got to secure it. There are also enclosures, right? Wall boxes, rack trays, wall plates, things like that. But here's where the fiber conversation really starts to get interesting. The electronics. These are the game changers. So when I teach this course for Cedia, you know, every year, teach this course live, get a big workshop, lots of people sitting in a room, you know, going through the session. Undoubtedly, there will be somebody in the course who says, hey, Cameron, look, I installed fiber 10 years ago, never used it, wired up this house, wired up this building, never used it. Why is this any different today? Well, look, fiber is not a new thing. Okay, it might be new to you, might be new to the AV industry, but fiber has been around for 50 years, okay? We've been integrating optical cable for a very long time. Here's the thing. We never really needed it for the bandwidth. We never really needed it for a lot of the different properties that we're seeing affect the installation today, the AV installation. We'll talk through this here in a minute. But what's really important for AV is there really wasn't a lot to plug into your fiber. There weren't little black boxes that actually let you use it effectively for things like HDMI or network switchers with fiber ports. It wasn't a thing that was really prevalent in AV installation that changed. We have black boxes now. We have to think about what type of devices I'm going to be plugging in.